Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, and we're gonna be providing an update to the bull market support band. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and check out the sale on the premium list at intothecryptoverse.com. If you sign up, you'll get access to weekly reports, three premium videos each week, and a website full of useful charts that you can use, ranging from logarithmic regression, to risk levels, to monthly returns, on-chain data, options data, social metrics, social metrics, etc. So a lot of a lot of different stuff you'll get access to. Make sure you guys check it out into the cryptoverse.com. So what I want to do is we we do this every week. We just want to keep a vague outline of where we are. And fundamentally, we are still in the same place we've been at for the last several months, okay? And and despite that, we will continue to provide the, provide the updates because the line in the sand is constantly shifting for us to switch from more bullish sentiment or bearish sentiment, right? I mean, when we fell below the bull market support band back in late November, obviously ever since then, the market has, has tended a bit more bearish than bullish, even if it's not what we want to see. Now do remember that historically, those who stick around when markets are bearish and in downtrends usually have the most to gain when we resume the uptrend. And those who buy when we're at these phases of the market or DCA over the macro scale tend to do the best, not the people that just buy at the hype of the mania phase. But I, I did want to talk about where the 20-week SMA and the 21-week EMA are today. So coming in today, the 20-week SMA is around 45.2K. And the 21-week EMA is at around 43.5K. So it more or less ranges from, let's say, $43,000 up to approximately $45,000. This is the line in the sand that we would, in fact, like to get above and not only get above it, but also furthermore to hold it as support. You know, and I've had some people request other updates as well because there's a lot of moving averages that we follow. Clearly, the bull market support band, I think, is the most important one as it, you know, holding support typically allows us to go put in a new all-time high. And getting rejected by it tends to, tends to you know, continue the, the momentum of the downtrend. So we are coming back up on it again. We're going to try to break it once more. We will ultimately see what happens. But again, holding it as support is a really great thing. Getting rejected by it, not a great thing. Okay, so we wanna we wanna keep close tabs on on where these where these valuations are, and and you know how quickly are they moving to the downside. One of the one of the things we can do is we can simply go back 20 weeks and say, you know what, we're getting close to where the top, the prior local top at 69k, will no longer be included in the calculation of the 20 week moving average. You might not really understand the importance of that if you don't if you don't really think about what goes into the calculation and and how it how it can make a difference. But if you think about it, if we no longer include these candles up here, then the bull market support band, the 20 week SMA is going to start decreasing a lot quicker. Because instead of, you know, instead of having some valuations in here that are at, you know, 63K, 64K, we're gonna get rid of those pretty quickly and then trend down. And so this that means that the 20 week SMA will start coming down a lot quicker once we're no longer including the, these these candles up here. And we, we mentioned that over the last few weeks. You can see ever since then, we've more or less just been going steadily down. But again, if Bitcoin is unable to, to pull back up here in the short term, this is going to continue to come down in a, in a very steep way. And then we'll we'll basically see if we can, we can break above it or not. Some of the other moving averages I, I think that are important to watch. One of the ones is, is one of a moving average we covered a lot previously and it is in fact the eight week moving average okay and the reason we follow the eight week is because during this bull market over here you can see we, we basically just kept holding support more or less on the eight week moving average but one of the things that we know and that we learned from from 2013 okay it's something we learned from from 2013 and if, if i hide the bull marks work band is that Anytime, well, I guess if I add, I should probably add it back. The the thing is, is anytime we dropped below the eight week, we always went to go back down to the bull market support band. Okay, that was one of the the that was one of the the, the hypotheses we had going into into the current bull market, or the one we at least had in late 2020, early 2021, was that whenever the eight week breaks, it normally means at the very least we go back down to the 20 week moving average, and you can see we actually broke below it, just like 2013 did, and we stayed below it a bit longer than 2013 though. 
And then again, over here, we were sort of between both of them. And then once we fell below it again, we, we ultimately went back down to the bull marks for it. What's interesting though, and, and this is the first time really this has happened in, in quite a long time, is that we've had a weekly close above the eight week moving average for the first time since, you know, really since November, early November of 2021. Now, I don't really think that this weekly close, to be completely honest, above the eight week is necessarily that important. I mean, I, I would argue we still have a long way to go before, before we're, you know, <laughs> before we're putting on our rally hats again, our rally caps. But at the same time, you know, when we're when it's been such a, a boring few months, I guess you, you take what you can get. The other moving average that I, I think is worth keeping a close eye on is the 50 week moving average. And the reason this one is important is because once upon a time we held it as support, you know, and, and you could even argue we sort of held it as support here on these wicks. And, and now that we fell below it right here, we have to see if we can contend with this as potential resistance. And that valuation is at 45.8K. So we have a lot of big metrics here that we, we need to get back above for us to, to really want to put it back on our rally caps. Not only do you have the bull market support band, which by the way, when we're below it, you're, you're typically better off thinking of it as a bear market resistance band. Never means we can't get back above it, right? Never means that. It just means that if mentally you assume that it, what's more important in a downtrend is resistance and not support, then these types of moves are not as surprising, right? When we when you get rejected by them, they're not as surprising because you're you're sort of assuming that the resistance will remain resistance for at least a little while before the bulls can muster up the courage to break back above it, and that's why support lines, when we are below it, can kind of somewhat become a meme because. You know, you can you can sort of break these support lines. I mean, does everyone? I'm sure a lot of people remember like the support at 53k, and at 46k, and at 40k, and and so on and so forth. And and I'm not saying we can't we can't necessarily hold this for a while. But the problem the problem is that this is overhead resistance. And remember, any any pump that does not get us back above it, first of all, is certainly not worth getting out of bed for. Okay, and we, we've talked about this every week, right? Every single week. Just because you get a pump does not mean that it, it means anything until we get back above it and then hold it as support. That's the key thing. You know, I, I know it's I know these market conditions are are, are brutal because you know, we just want to see it go up, but we need to we need to remain, you know, somewhat pragmatic here and say, you know what? Look, we understand that we're facing some headwinds here. Not only on the charts, but also you know, on, a, on, on the macro scale. But these overhead resistance levels, whenever we do break them, then we can look forward to trying to hold them as support. Until then, let's try to consider them resistance and, and root for the bulls to get back above it, but not be surprised if, if we continue to have to fight for, for a while. Again, you can see all of these prior moves, we've just been, we've just been rejected by it. Okay, so let's see if we can get another push back up here. And if we can, not only do we need to get back above it, we need to hold it as support. Okay, so there's a lot of a lot of key things, and you might you might not really understand why the holding it as support is necessary. The problem is that when you don't hold it as support, like like over here in 2019, and you sort of rally back above it, it's typically not a good thing. But you see what happened when we held it as support over here after we rallied above it. It led to a, an explosive parabolic rally. Even if you go back to 2017. Anytime we held it as support, it just led to a new all-time high, right? Support, new high. Support, well, I mean, this one wasn't really a new high. It was, it was a local high locally, but we, it was not past this all-time high. But then again, holding it as support, it led to a new high. Support, a new high. Support here, a new high. If we break it, and then it became resistance, right? And then we got rejected by it here. We got rejected by it here. And then again in 2019 when we fell below it, right? We got rejected, got rejected right here on the way up, and then we came down, we got above it, we failed to hold it as support, and then the floor fell out. So remember, you wanna get above it, then you wanna hold it as support. So again, these are the lines in the sand, remember it more or less ranges from around 43.5K up to approximately 45.2K. Those are our lines in the sand for us to get a little bit more bullish. Until then, we have the resistance levels, you guys know what they are, and we will find out what they are next week 
a week from today. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up. Remember to check out the sale on the premium list into thecryptoverse.com. And I will see you next time. Bye.